Wayfair has laid off over 1,600 employees in its last round of restructuring. According to Retail Dive, the job cuts, which mark the third round of cuts in about 18 months, affect 13% of its global workforce and 19% of its corporate team. The news also comes after a recent memo from the Wayfair CEO that was leaked to Business Insider near the end of 2023, which said, quote, Working long hours, being responsive, blending work and life is not anything to shy away from. There is not a lot of history of laziness being rewarded with success, end quote. Oh, boy. Woof. <laughs> uh, Michael, I'm going to go to you first on this one. This is a loaded question, but what advice would you have for Wayfair CEO as he tries to navigate his way through all of this and tries to wipe the egg off his face? You know, he's got to refocus his efforts. Um, I mean, we do uh, org uh, restructures for a living, basically. Mm -hmm. It's one of the major things that we do. And when I hear the right. numbers that he's cut, and then the the challenge I hear is three cuts within 18 months, something's not right. They're yeah. either not cutting effectively uh, to where they need to get to and or the business is shrinking and contracting so dramatically so quickly that the cuts just aren't enough. And when I when I read through some of his his press releases, it feels like his focus is really not in the right place. I mean, it's a very specific thing in reorganizing a business. You do it both financially and structurally to support the needs of your current and perceived future business. So from an org cut standpoint, it's actually one of the most simple things to do, um, as well as the number one rule in, in doing org restructures is you don't want to have to do it again. You want to do it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you really want to do it, get it right. Cut as deep as you can and then set yourselves up for at least 24, 36 months. And clearly they're not doing that. Um, I think his focus is completely misguided because he's not talking about growth from a top line standpoint. He's not talking about EBITDA. He's also not talking about what his customer needs and wants are. So for, for me, I would almost say leave the, the restructuring to the tactical folks and focus your efforts more on how are you going to grow this business? How are you going to stem your losses? And then how how else are you going to make it profitable? Because the one thing I haven't heard him talk about, and I haven't done a ton of work on this, but I guess I would suggest his focus be on the supply chain and the operational challenges in running a business like Wayfair. That business is highly complex mm -hmm. in how you run it profitably from a supply chain standpoint, just based on the nature of the product that they're offering and the breadth of SKUs that they're offering. Yeah. And I, I think you bring up so many good points in that, Michael. I really appreciate your insight too, especially having having gone through reorgs um, at several organizations. Chris, I know that you are hearing a ton. You posted about this over the weekend. Yeah. On LinkedIn, you're hearing a lot from those employees who are have been impacted by this. Uh, especially, what where do you sit on this, and and especially given your experience at home furnishings? Yeah, I want to. I want to. I'll touch on that. I want to add on to what Michael said too, because yeah, I have I have met the CEO Shaw a number of times, probably, God, five, six, seven times in my life. Had direct conversations with him. And the one thing I would say about him, he's very left brain in how he thinks about the business. He's very digital first in his mindset. And that'll come into some of my points too. But to Michael's point about staging the layoffs, mm -hmm. I think that's actually a very digital first approach to how you even go about a corporate restructuring too. Because you're like, hey, let me test the waters on this. Let me get the seat and see how it goes. Oh, if I need more, I'll just do it. The problem with that though, is it's a very impersonal approach to solving the problem. In theory, it could work. It might be a, the best optimal way to do it, but it's not when you get down to it because of the morale, the impact that it has on the organization. So, but I think that's an interesting lens to, to add to what Michael said. But to your point, I posted this on LinkedIn this weekend and I looked this morning, I 150,000 impressions already. And here's what I said. I said, quote, Wayfair had a chance to redefine home furnishings retailing for the better, but their absolute inability to put forth a compelling physical store manifestation of their brand over the past decade should be an indictment of the CEO and the entire leadership team. It's time to bring some right brain thinkers into this organization, end quote. Because that's my thing is like, how can a company that had the gift of the pandemic screw up this bad mm -hmm. to the point where they're doing multiple rounds of layoffs, 
I advised them actually directly in 2017 to Shaw and the rest of the leadership team to open up an Ikea like killer store concept. They didn't do it. They still haven't done it. We haven't seen anything from them and we've seen absolutely nothing. We've seen bupkis. So my question is, or my thoughts are that when I look back, I step back from this. I think there's just downright mismanagement here. And there's a lack of a creative vision of where this brand needs to go. And with that said, I think there's time for it's, it's probably pr getting pretty close to time for leadership change. In my opinion, that's how you write the ship. Yeah. I mean, Chris, I interviewed Fiona Tan, the chief technology officer of Wayfair at shop talk last year. And we were talking about, you know, how Wayfair was set to open a store this, this past fall, like they yeah, were the opening fall, right? it. Yep. They were opening it. She was thinking about it in the right way where she was like, we want to take this digital experience that you have on Wayfair that people are, that people enjoy, that people like shopping and bring it into a physical space. Uh, and, and clearly like Michael was saying, like you were saying, like they're still hamstrung by something. I don't know if it's hubris, lack of agility, perfectionism, like cost. Right. I, it's really hard to identify what's happening there. But in the meantime, I think you're losing morale of all the people who are there to make this, this stuff happen. You're, if, if you're worried about being, you know, your job being at risk at every, any given point, I think you're really challenged to make any of this progress go forward and for the team to be able to think in terms of physical location and enhancing the digital business too. Um, but Manola, I'll let you have the last word here. <laughs> I mean, I, I agree with, with uh, what, what's been said so far. It feels like death by a million paper cuts with this kind of, you know, trickling of the, the third, now third round of, of layoffs. And I do think it's, you know, a wasted um, spike in the pandemic, right? It's, it's right. kind of, when are you going to see that type of, of growth and opportunity? And probably, you know, knock on wood, hopefully never, because that, you know, would mean we're all stuck inside again. But um, but yeah, it's a missed opportunity to kind of rethink what does that mean for the the business in, in the future? How do they set themselves up for, for success? To Michael's point with, uh, you know, inherently complex uh, supply chain requirements that the category has, right? So I, it doesn't seem like continuing to cut in small increments is going to deliver the, the change that they need. Especially with Ikea coming to eat their lunch, which we will talk about soon. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's a great, great segue. And yeah. And it's, it's sad because the, the capital from the pandemic that they should have acquired has essentially been wasted to, and they weren't ready to go on a store concept that they could have, where they, that they could have used in deployment of that capital to take full advantage and, and grow their brand even more. But all right. But before we get to headline number four and Ikea, Yes. I want to ask you a question, Anne. Yes. I like After, these. You like these? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. After a chilly New York NRF. Yes. Are you ready for some warmth oh in our God. future? Am I ready? Am I ready? I, I joked last week, like that you got to start planning the next vacation while you're on the vacation. So you have something to look oh. forward to. I actually hate doing that. I can't stand when people do that. It drives me nuts. But but anyway, Anne, well, if you are, well, you should yes. pack up your sunnies and your sundresses because oh, yeah. we're heading to Palm Springs for Etel West. Yes. It's the 25th anniversary of Etel West. It's happening February 26th to 29th. And they've given us a special discount code for our listeners. And the code is OmniTalk20. OmniTalk with an O, 20 for 20% off your ticket. We'll be there live streaming from the show floor with the help and support of Firework. And we hope you will be there too. Go to etailwest.wbrresearch.com. That's etailwest.wbresearch.com and use code OmniTalk20 to register.